on the social network effect problem. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go outside? And the answer is there's no one outside. <laughs> so it's boring. How do we fix that? Where do we start? You make calls. You call other parents and you say, hey, my kid is gonna start doing dirt biking. I'm happy to have your kid join my kid. You have to, as a parent, like create those opportunities for them because we can't hand them devices in average in the United States at age seven and then expect them to figure out how when they become a teenager and more mobile and like need to go out and push these boundaries and explore the world without the skill set to do it. So you either have to teach that the whole time or you have to be someone who's able to facilitate that at that time. And I think that that's really important that parents need to say, I know that this, my job is not over. Just because they're walking and they think that you're the worst ever and the <laughs> eye rolls and all of the things, right? They still need you at that stage even more than they did when they were little. They're gonna be able to source their own food at a lunchroom in, in elementary school. As a teenager, they're coming up some pretty complex issues. They've got friends that might have had a sexual assault. They might have people in their campus that are propagating hate speech on online channels. And, and they're dealing with it and trying to figure out how and who and what they are and how do I react to that. And if we don't show up as parents and listen and really dive in and say like, how's your day going and accept, fine. <laughs> we're not gonna get anywhere, right? It's always fine. Right, right. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> Good. we're going to go to the stool. We're going to take the leg off, right? <laughs> Here's the flashlight. Not do it that way. But like spend time with your kids. Go out with them. My husband reminded me, he's like, you're 50. You probably shouldn't be like jumping dirt bikes. I started jujitsu with my son. <laughs> Day one, he flipped me over and broke my rib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do those things. So you said pick up the phone as far as getting outside. Have you picked up the phone for, hey, we're not giving them phones until high school, you know? Who's with me? Well, I'm a pretty public figure, so I... That's, yeah, you're maybe in a unique spot I'm in, maybe in a unique spot from other parents. So but I would say... From parents, from yeah. clients. I say to them, I'm like, who do you have in your corner? Start making those calls. Be vocal about it. Nobody really knows. The world of this kind of overuse, addiction, whatever we're going to call it, the families that are struggling and they're taking phones, they're screaming at the top of their lungs, there's holes in the wall, there are fights that are occurring that are that just bring the worst in people. It's reminiscent of like growing up in a household of an alcoholic, that you just, there's no safe space and we don't talk about it, right? We show up for church, you know, we do all of the things and we pretend like everything's okay. We have to stop pretending everything's okay because we're having this conversation because we know it's not. So we have to be willing to be a little bit more vulnerable and risk what does that look like on the inside so that we can get help. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Dr. Lisa Stroman. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.